Hey, what's up guys? So there's this new feature that just got announced this morning for the ALP uh, that helps with the installation and placement of the laser jammer heads in your vehicle, specifically kind of optimizing the placement of the heads to ensure that they can properly jam laser guns and minimize some of the potential interference issues that could lead to punch throughs on uh, the system not being able to uh, perform as effectively as it otherwise could. And the idea has to do with avoiding some of the potential interference issues. Uh, now, kind of a high level, the idea as far as like how laser jammers work, they're kind of like monitoring to see what the pulses are coming in from the police laser gun, uh, figure out what gun it is, how to jam it, and then just return fire to jam it, right? Now, for some of the trickier guns, like the variable pulse rate guns, the laser jammer has to more continuously monitor uh, the patterns coming in and how they're changing so that it can continue to adapt uh, its return pulses. Now, obviously the idea is you're gonna be wanting to uh, see the pulses coming in from the laser gun and then send back the proper return pulses to jam the gun. However, there could be instances where you actually wind up seeing uh, the pulses coming out of the laser jammer thinking those are pulses from the laser gun and getting confused, which could then potentially lead to punch throughs. This can happen, happen with like interference or crosstalk, for example. So let's say uh, you're driving around and the laser jammer is trying to jam the laser gun. Some of those pulses go out, they start reflecting back off of cars, signs, whatever, like there's stuff around you, right? Some of those pulses could reflect back and the laser jammer doesn't know is that from the laser gun or are those my own reflections? Or what happens if you install the heads in such a way where one of the heads could actually see another head and so you wind up getting crosstalk where like the pulse is going straight from one of the heads to the other head and it's seeing this again, thinking that uh, it's the pulse is potentially from the laser gun. And if the uh, jammer starts trying to jam itself in a sense, it gets confused. Well, now it's no longer jamming the laser gun, hence you wind up getting a potential punch through. Uh, and so that's one of the reasons why placement uh, of the laser jammer heads is so important, right? Making sure they're straight and level, you don't deal with uh, maybe reflective stuff on the car, etc. cetera. Uh, anyways, the reason I wanted to do this video is there's a new feature on the ALP that allows you to actually test uh, the placement of the laser jammer heads on your vehicle to see if you have any sort of interference going on, which is pretty cool. Now, I haven't tried it yet. I figured I'd just hop in the car, play around with my system and see how it works. And at the same time, let's grab a camera and let's just take a look at this together so we can see basically what the feature is like, how to use it. And I don't know, do I have interference on my car? We'll take a look. I've got an AOP installed, of course. On the front, I've got uh, like three regular heads. And I also have the option of swapping out the regular head for a TX head. And I can go to the back of the car, swap the heads. And so for testing, I can try like three regular and also two regular and one TX. Uh, I've got two regular and one TX in the back as well. Though my TX head is now dead. So I'm gonna need to like replace that TX head. So I guess uh, I can try it for the back, but I don't really know how the front and rear stuff works. Either way, let's just try it out and see exactly how this feature works. And so with that said, let's dive right into it. <laughs> So over on RDF, uh, BRD, who's the distributor here in the US for the ALP, uh, he just did a post uh, kind of announcing this new feature and explaining how to use it. Now, if you read over the thread, he says that to uh, check your sensor replacement, or I think he meant sensor placement, uh, and minimize reflections from your sensors interfering with each other, we have a service mode that will help you maximize your install. Now, in order to use this feature, you're gonna need the hi-fi module for the ALP. It's basically a uh, control pad like this with an external speaker, which is gonna give you uh, some of your like audio announcements and whatnot. I've got my speaker installed behind the dash. Uh, if you have the regular control pad, it looks the same for the control pad. Feature isn't gonna work, but again, if you have the hi-fi module, which you do need, uh, it's this is how it's gonna work. So in the instructions, it says with the hi-fi controller, we go into the yellow menu uh, by pressing the menu button and then releasing it when it enters the yellow menu. Menu. Awesome. Now we're going to press the menu button seven times. Parking. Side. Ellie. Firm. Five, restore. Six. Connect. Enter. Service codes. Okay. So we're going to hit this button right there, the power button to go in. Now we're going to press this five times. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And now we hit the power button. Five. Okay. Now one. One. Okay. One. Enter. And then. One. 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 Okay, so we've done five, one, one. Okay, well, that's really loud, and I don't think I have a way to actually shut that off when it's going, so I had to turn off the car to stop it. And so as you could see in here, I was getting a green LED and then the uh, like continuous alert tone, right? Uh, now, the way BRD explained it, he said that the LED will display either green, yellow, or red, and you'll hear loud tones corresponding to the LED status. If you have red, uh, you'll most likely have punch-through issues with the harder VPR guns, variable pulse rate guns. This means that your uh, RX sensors, kind of your receive sensors, are picking up pulses from 
from the TX sensors and you most likely have interference. If you have red, you have to play around with your sensor placement so the sensors do not see each other. Now, I'm not entirely sure how this works with front versus rear setups. Like, does it test both? Uh, how can you independently test just the front and just the rear? Is that kind of stuff? There's a lot of stuff I don't know. So we have a discussion area over on the forums where like I'm asking questions. I actually just posted it right before uh, while shooting this video. Uh, something else I was curious about, uh, I just did my test with uh, the TX head up front. Um, and just now I went to the back of the car and unplugged the TX head up front and then plugged in uh, the regular head uh, up in the center. So we can go ahead and repeat the test real quick and kind of see how that works. Warning, automatic sensor check failed, F2. Okay, so I just started the car and it gave me uh, the sensor check failure. So I have to go back into the app and have it like forget the sensors and re-memorize the sensors. And to do that, it's kind of an aside uh, for the purposes of this video, we're just gonna reset the defaults here. So we'll say reset defaults, yes. Okay. Uh, and then I'm just going to go ahead and hit uh, download again. So like all the settings that I've configured with my ALP uh, with the app, um, like on the website, you can just go ahead and transfer all that stuff back over to the ALP and like uh, uh, restore all of my settings for me. So uh, now the uh, data stored, the head up front is going to be working properly. We can go ahead and uh, repeat this test. He's bringing up my music here. <laughs> okay, let's see. I got to close Bluetooth here so I can bring the uh, Hi-Fi module back online. So it's all uh, restarting. Let's go back into the menu. Okay, and it looks like uh, with the three regular heads up front, I'm getting the same uh, green response or test result, I guess, is the best word for that. And I actually had asked BRD uh, about this, and I got a reply, again, while I was shooting this video. It's something I'm, like, actively working on. I asked if you could use it with, like, three regular heads up front. Just tested it. It looks like it works. He says that if you're usual utilizing a regular sensor in the F2 port, kind of like the front center port, uh, it can work with regular sensors as well. It'll put the number one ports in listening mode and the number two ports, that center head, uh, in transmit mode. So basically, I guess operating the same as like the TX head uh, would operate. Uh, I also saw a post on there just underneath. Uh, Greg was asking like if you, um, you know, you'd want the test to be green. Yes, uh, yellow isn't ideal and red is the worst. And again, BRD is explaining like it's very hard to get green on most installs. Uh, and the ALP will compensate when it sees interference by dynamically reducing the output uh, or reducing sensitivity during a VPR hit. If you're in red mode, you'll most likely have punch throughs because its interference would be too great for it to compensate for. Um, so anyways, there's a lot of really good information as you can see here uh, over on the forums. I'll link to this discussion area uh, in the video so you can check it out. But anyways, it looks like my setup is good. So that's kind of how I tested. You could do the same thing with your ALP. I'm gonna go ahead and switch back and get the uh, TX head uh, operating up front again. Um, but anyway, it's kind of a cool feature. I haven't seen this implemented before or uh, with any other laser jammer. Um, again, placement can be kind of tricky and the AOP can somewhat be finicky with like its placement to ensure that it can operate optimally, you know? And so it's cool that they've actually built in this functionality. I'm not actually sure how long it's been here. I just saw the post this morning and I'm like, that's cool, I don't know about that. Let's go play with it. So anyway, here's a video. Go test your install if you like. And then if you're curious, you wanna learn more, uh, hop on the forums, I'll link to that down in the description for you guys. If you want to pick up an AOP, link in the description for that as well. Um, I like kind of these more advanced features that you don't typically see on other laser jammers. Usually we focus on like, how well can it jam guns and that kind of stuff, you know, but some of these advanced features I find to be really helpful as well. So with that said, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Hope you guys are doing great. I'll see you later. Bye.